All right, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Steve Meek. I'm the regional sales manager for the Midwest region of the United States. I joined the Wenzel team back in January of 2019. And as of May this year, uh, I took on responsibility of managing aftermarket service and calibration sales as well. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Jonah DeLongchamp. Jonah? Yeah, and uh, welcome everyone. And welcome to the uh, More Parts Faster with the Wenzel MMA and Polywork Inspection on, on Demand. My name is Jonah DeLongchamp and I joined the Wenzel America team as an application engineer in August of 2009 until January of this year where I took over my new role as product specialist for the portable metrology for the NAFTA region. All right, thank you, Jonah. Uh, so today, Jonah and I will be talking about how to measure more parts faster featuring the Wenzel MMA. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what the MMA is, uh, where and why you would use it, uh, and then we'll get hands-on showing you uh, actually how it's used as a measuring tool with Polyworks software. Uh, we'll have some time designated for a Q&A session toward the end of this presentation. Uh, so there is a, a chat box uh, to the right of your screen uh, allowing you to submit questions. So if you have questions or comments about anything you've seen today, uh, please send them in. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's get started. Uh, Jonah, what is the Wenzel MMA? So the Wenzel MMA is the mobile measuring arm um, by Wenzel, and it's a fully seven axis, um, uh, either tactile or optical sensor um, portable measuring device. And uh, it's, uh, it's obviously mobile. Um, you can um, have this um, placed on a magnetic base um, to take out to your machine, um, machine tool, or out in your shop floor environment. You can also get with a tripod. Or a rolling cart, um, so it's it's movable um, to different uh, areas of your facility, different rooms, different areas of a manufacturing plant, um, built-in temp comp, etc., built-in um, Wi-Fi capability, and also built-in battery. Uh, there's no warm-up times with it, um, and uh, there's also no sticker marking, as you've seen in the past. Uh, some of these other devices have sticker markings on it. Um, again, with a built-in temperature compensation and stable rest position, it's accurate and re repeatable for its results. Okay. Thank you, Jonah. So uh, now that we know a little bit about what it is, uh, where do we use this, Jonah, and, and why do I want one? So it, the, um, the industries that it can be used for here, uh, as you see on the application slide, uh, for reverse engineering, um, straight away you can just start with the scanning uh, head on it. You can just start go ahead and scanning. Uh, an object and, and collect all the data that you want to collect off there and then export that data. Um, then it can either go um, to another process uh, internal or um, with the Polyworks software, there's an additional um, software you can purchase for it modeler, which allows you to then create fully functional CAD models. Uh, the other areas uh, are for shop floor um, because again, it's got that built in temp comp, um, temperature swings throughout the day are, are not affected by measuring results. Um, it's portable, of course, it's lightweight, um, and it's mobile. Um, so it's great for the shop floor, moving it around to, to machine to machine. Um, you, don't, you don't have to necessarily take your part to the measuring device. You can bring your measuring device to the part, and the part doesn't even have to leave the machine. You can bring the measuring device right to the, right to the turning center or machine center and, and measure the part in the machine without even unchucking the part. The other areas are, are large size parts. So uh, parts stay stationary, but you move the device around the part and collect the data. Um, if the part is stationary and the, and the uh, device is stationary, um, our arms go all the way up to four and a half meters. Um, and some of the other industries that we find this used in are mold makers, um, so big molds um, collecting all this three-dimensional shape data. Uh, tubing and piping is another great area. It's kind of a little bit more tricky to do that with conventional measuring techniques um, and the automotive environment too as well. Okay. Joan, I have to ask, is this designed to uh, replace the CMM or are your customers running this in parallel with the CMM? How does that work? Yeah, mo mostly in tandem. Um, you know, for, for, for people that don't have any measuring equipment, this is a great starter off device um, because it is portable. You know, you don't have to have a dedicated lab. You can move it around. Um, uh, there are certain um, uh, laser scanner heads that can be placed on here. Uh, one in particular um, that can be transferred from the mobile measuring arm to a conventional CMM frame as long as it has a PH10M on it. Oh, nice. 
Okay, so so versatile. Uh, one one more quick question. While you yeah. mentioned large part sizes, what about parts of different colors or different material types? So um, with the and you'll see it in the demonstration um, with the laser scanner that I'll be showing today. Um, there's an applet that comes with the scanner um, that allows me to adjust uh, the camera and the laser intensities. Um, but there's a really great little switch in there. I'll show you. It's called automatic integration. So uh, the laser automatically adjusts itself as you traverse over different colored materials. Okay, nice. Looking forward to seeing that, Jordan. So, okay, so me as a more of a traditional CMM guy, uh, I'm used to a controller, a, a hand box. I don't see any of that here. Um, I just see the arm. So how do we actually use this thing? So um, there is seven axis um, to it. Um, there's also the, the handheld device, like you see here in front of you. Um, it's a pistol grip uh, with a push-pull trigger um, that starts and st stops the scan, pauses the scan, starts the scan, et cetera. Um, there's also a thumb button on the top uh, that, that accepts the scan when you're done. And um, it's a very easy uh, interchangeable device. Um, whether you want to go with a tactile, straight tactile probe, or a combination of a laser tactile or just the laser. Um, the image on the far right, as you see, uh, there's a little unlock and unlock uh, switch on there, which allows the whole unit to drop out and replace it with something else. Uh, so it is a manually operated uh, device. Um, uh, the programming, um, it can be done in the software. Uh, if you have re repeatable parts, you can create a program in the software, but you are your own driver, you are your own controller. Um, there's also visual indicators on the scanning head. If you notice the two images on the left, uh, the top one is a green and you can kind of see the green is an indicator light that tells me that I'm in the range. It's collecting good data. Um, there's also, you can barely see it, but there's a faint of the blue laser line that you see there. And then there's the green dots. So it's a visual indicator letting me know how far away I am just by looking at the object, or I can look at the probe, uh, look at the scanner head too as well to see if I'm in range. Um, the further away I get to the object or the closer I get to the object, that green light will then change to an orange light. And if I go really close or really far away, it'll turn red and there won't be any point data collected. So it won't just scan the room. <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain range, yeah. Okay, so I have to interrupt you and I apologize, uh, but you mentioned there's a bit of manual involvement, right? Um, that being said, what is the weight of this thing? So with the um, with my demo unit that I have here in the office is a two and a half meter uh, demo unit uh, comes with a hard shell case rolling around um, and a few extra components. There's a mountable hard base that comes with the device um, and of course the laser scanner head as well and then the arm itself. Um, with all that together, it's um, it's it's just under 70 pounds for shipping. Um, but um, when we Mount it on, let's say, and as an example, a tripod or a mag base or a rolling cart. Um, it's all counterbalanced. So um, as it sits standing still, uh, as long as the um, tripod or rolling cart is, is level, it'll stay stationary. Um, but as you use the device, it's it's counterbalanced. So as I tip the, the arm to the left or to the right, it stays there and does not move until I do the next position. Um, so it's it's very um, user-friendly um, and ergonomically correctly designed. So there's no wear and tear on, on your on your body parts um, using the device for a period of time. Nice, okay. All right, well, well, thank you, Jonah. So um, we've talked a little bit about what it is and how to use it. So let's talk a little bit about the software, right? Polyworks uh, has been around for a long time, has a great reputation. Uh, what do you like most about the software and what keeps people coming back? So because it is um, because it is a universal platform, um, I, I, I was going to show it with the arm, of course, but it can be placed on other measuring devices like uh, Winslow CMM, as an example. Um, and it can hold these different laser scanners inside the software, too, as well. So it can use um, a multitude of different laser scanners. Um, so that's what I really like about it is that it's a very universal uh, platform. Um, the other thing is, is it's very simple to use. There's some nice tools inside here that do some automatic things for you, um, as I'll show in the demonstration. Um, and of course, it can be connected, um, you know, Wi-Fi capable with a device to the computer that's running your Polyworks software. And if you'd like, you can also unplug it and run just off the battery. Okay. Thank you, Jonah. Um, so we have the arm sitting here. I'm dying to see this thing in action. All right. 
All right, so let's get into it here. Um, let me go ahead and escape here and minimize. So what you see in front of you, everyone, is Polyworks. Um, uh, there's a, uh, the, it's all customizable as far as the toolbars go. You can move them around, dock them where you'd like. Um, uh, so for user uh, layout, um, very customizable for user to user. On the left-hand side, we have a window here that shows either a tree view or a dialogue zone. So as you navigate through the uh, software, these, these windows will show up and they will show you information. Um, then what you see in the big screen with a trihedron is the 3D scene. And 3D scene is um, could house your, your scan data, uh, your CAD data if you use CAD uh, for inspection purposes, um, as well as your reporting data. So, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start the device now. There's a power switch right on the front of it. You have it all connected here. I'm going to go ahead and start that up. And as I begin scanning, everyone, um, the uh, the computer audio I have turned down a little bit, but um, it's a nice um, uh, thing to have turned on for as it collects point data, you can hear the data coming through. So not only can you use your ears, but you can also use your eyes um, to see where you're scanning, but you can also use your ears to detect are you scanning? Yes. So. So once the unit is powered on here, I'm going to go ahead and select here what I'm going to tell Polyworks I'm connecting to. Okay, so I'm going to go down here uh, to the plugins and our plugin for the scanner and let the device connect. And here I can show uh, right away what I was mentioning before in the video settings here. Here is the video settings for um, the scanner itself. Okay, and um, here I have the ability to adjust the, with a slide bar through different colors. And this is what I was mentioning before about this automatic integration. So when I turn the switch on, you can see that it automatically adjusts itself to wherever the laser is pointing at and seeing right now. And as I move across different objects, um, this will automatically adjust these integration times. So the other thing we have down here is a nice slide bar. Okay, so as I slide uh, from, from uh, right to left here, from comfort to quality, you can see that the window becomes a little bit smaller as I go closer to quality. Uh, so you get a little bit better um, uh, results. Um, and the more you go with the comfort, the wider re the results get, so you get more data coming in, uh, uh, less data coming into quality, but it, um, it's gonna be more refined. So I, I like to pick something uh, right in the middle, for, it depends on the part that I'm measuring. And then below that is my advanced parameters of the, of the laser scanner itself. Um, and here, as I slide the bar across, you can see that these automatically adjust and they're like predefined settings for me. Of course, I can always set up my own custom settings and save those settings as well if I like. So I find something kind of in the middle, I'm happy with that and I close it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say start scan here. Now, because it's the first time connecting to the device with, with Polyworks here, I must select a profile and here I have some different profiles. Um, I have just a simple uh, hard probe that I can mount on there. And of course I have the scanner here. So I'm gonna select the scanner that's what I'm gonna be showing today. And there you'll see our joints one through six plus your additional scanner axis, that's your seven axis. So, so here I'm gonna go ahead and quote unquote home the, the arm by moving uh, the different axes. So you see there's one, here comes the two, the three, the four as I, as I pull it off of the, the stand. And once that dialog window goes away, it is now ready to go. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start scanning uh, an object here just to show um, how it's done and what we can do at the end with just a simple scan. Um, and then from there, we'll take it a little bit further. So let me go ahead and get started here. So here I'm just moving the device over the top of the object, getting it kind of lined up using those visual ind ind indicators, let me know that I'm in the right area. I'm gonna pull the trigger to start the scan. And here, as you see, it's, I'm just kind of moving over the, over the part, back and forth, sweeping back and forth, up and down, left and right. And as I go away from the part, way far away, you can see it's not collecting any data. As I go closer to the part, when it's in range, now it's collecting the data. So Jordan, this almost looks like a, a spray paint or a power washing type motion here. Is it really just that easy? Yeah, if, if you've ever painted something in your life, um, you'll be able to use this device. It's very simple and easy to use. So once I complete one side of this object here and start to fill in all the areas that I wanna measure and get scan data back on, 
as I move the device from, from, let's say, the front to the side, to the left, to the right, to the back, et cetera, I'll just push the trigger. Now it's in pause mode, so it's not collecting any data right now. And it allows me to now to position the device to a different spot, and I will restart the scan. So essentially, it's one scan pass, uh, one scan object that you get back returned. But it could be made comprised of multiple different paths. Get up. Well, Jonah, earlier you mentioned this is the seven axis arm. Uh, being a traditional CMM guy, again, I'm used to hearing three axis and, and now five axis. Um, what do you mean by the seven? Where are those axes at? So the seven are, um, there's two at the base, um, the shoulder, if you will. Uh, there's two at the elbow, and then there's the additional three at the wrist. And those comprise of the, to make up the seven axes of the mobile measuring arm. Okay. And, and what about battery life? I don't see that we're not really plugged in. We're just running off the, uh, the arm's battery. How long can you take this thing out on the floor without having to recharge or plug in? Uh, so it depends on what you're doing. Um, if you have the laser scanner, like I'm doing now, the battery life for laser scanning is four hours. And if you're just doing tactile probe and no laser scanning, the battery life doubles, it's eight hours of battery life. Okay. So here I'm almost complete with the scan. As you notice on the image there, um, as I move the, uh, the device around, PolyWorks um, automatically adjusts and, um, and gives me the view that I'm looking for. So it's always looking directly normal to the scanner. So it's real easy for me to see if there's a hole in the data that I, I that might have missed because I'm only human. <laughs> so I'll try and get in the bores a little bit here on this object here. So yeah, basically just painting the part, if you will. That's what I like to call it. Tony, you mentioned uh, four hours scanning, eight hours tactical. Do you find most of your customers are using one or the other or, or, or both? Um, typically what people use this for is with the laser heads on there and they wanna do what I'm doing right now and they wanna collect lots of data. And whether or not they're using that data to analyze um, against a nominal CAD file as an example, or extract objects out of the, um, out of the scan data like circles, planes, et cetera, um, to then analyze, you can do that. Or um, when I get done here in a second here, I can show you um, just how quick and easy it is to export this data out as a reverse engineering tool as an example. So I'll do a couple different things. Um, but yeah, most people will use this to, to um, make sure that their process is going smoothly out on the shop floor um, by analyzing uh, the scan data back to the CAD data. So there I've completed a pretty good scan of this part. You know, of course, I'm only human, so I did miss some holes, but that's a pretty good um, a representation of what this part is. Um, you know, obviously, I could come back in here and get a little bit more there, et cetera. But at this point here, I'm going to go ahead and say end scan here. Now, it might take a little while because there's quite a few data points that came through. Um, the laser scanner that I have on here is what we call our MLS 100P, which is a 100 millimeter line. Uh, length, uh, blue line scanner, and it can collect up to 600,000 points a second. Okay, so once the scan completes, um, the blue areas indicate an internal feature and the, and the yellow areas indicate an external feature. So um, at this point, if I go back to the left-hand side of the screen and select tree view here, um, I can then simply take the surface scan that I've created here, the one that's highlighted and right click on it and export this straight out as either a point cloud data, a text file, um, or as a polygonal model, an STL file. So here I just give it the name, the file path I'd like to go and there's your file extension STL. So STL files can be opened and, uh, and utilized in other different softwares and systems. Uh, but again, you can always get uh, PolyWorks. What you're looking at here is Inspector, um, but there's also PolyWorks Modeler, which allows you to take the STL data and create CAD data out of it. So the other thing um, that people use is not just for reverse engineering, is but to actually uh, compare what, I, what the scan data that I've collected to uh, the nominal CAD file. 
okay? So to do that, um, if I go here to file and I go to import and I look at importing the CAD models, here I can go find that CAD model and select it and open that model and let it import into the system. And you'll see that the scan data, of course, isn't lined up to the CAD model. Uh, the CAD model comes in at the base of the, uh, of the arm, that's the coordinate system. And the CAD model is just wherever it's at in that volume of the, of the, uh, of the measuring arms volume. So, so to take these two and, and align those two together, um, there's a really nice function in, in Polyworks that I really enjoy. As long as you have enough scan data um, all the way around the part, um, if I do this, I can go to alignments, and there's several different alignments tools inside here, but I'll show you this one here. And this is the uh, best fit, yeah, so it's the best fitting alignment, the data that I've collected to the reference object or the CAD model, okay? So when I select this here, um, the applet that comes up um, allows me, if you notice here, at the pre-alignment stage, it can be automatic. So if, if you think you have enough data around the part, automatic's gonna work. Um, but if it's the, the data is sporadic or um, the part's not finished and you don't need to scan that data, you can always drop this down and select point pairs. Uh, when I do point pairs, the screen splits from CAD to uh, uh, scan data. And then I pick um, CAD and I pick the scan data roughly in around the right areas uh, with, with four or more points. Um, I usually go about six or seven. Uh, to, to get a, like a good pre-alignment going. Uh, once that's done, as soon as I say start, it's actually starting the alignment. It's not just doing it, it's starting the alignment, which in fact that it does iterations and it does its convergence values. So I'm gonna select automatic here and let's see how it goes. And just like that, it's done. It's done six iterations and the convergence value is some minuscule number. <laughs> so it's done its best job inside the system to align what I've collected to that native CAD file. Okay. So here you can see um, a little bit underneath the uh, underneath the, the part here, I have some uh, erroneous data. That's the, the, the scan uh, that I collected. Um, th there's a post underneath there that I'm held, holding the part up a little bit elevated off the table that it's sitting on. And that all that data can be removed. And you'll see a little bit of the clamp I'm using here to, to hold the data. So once this is, once this is completed, um, we can then analyze uh, what we've what we've collected to that nominal CAD file. And we can do that by one of the icons. Kind of looks like a, a, a color map, okay? And that's exactly what it is, a data color map. And in here, I can um, select here, I wanna look at the, the data that I've collected to the reference object, which is your CAD file, okay? So from here, again, the applet shows up on the left-hand side and I can give it some some max distances to search for. Um, I'm, in, I'm in units of millimeters, so, uh, let's just go one millimeter here as an example. And I have some other tools in here, but I'm gonna select measure just so we can see what it looks like when we do a data analysis, okay? So here you can see now the image changes in the 3D scene and we get this uh, color map bar on the right-hand side, okay? So the hot, the red area, the hot area is a positive value and the blue or, or cool magenta area is the negative value. And you can kind of see um, that uh, the whole part is kind of um, in the blue area, which is a little bit undersized, okay? So this physical part that I just scanned <laughs> makes sense because it is a 3D printed part. Um, so it's probably not, it's not a machine component. <laughs> um, it is a 3D printed part. So it's a little bit undersized in all areas. Uh, well, they got good here. <laughs> That's the green areas. Um, so it's just a visual indicator here. Um, you know, is there things that are there that aren't supposed to be there or vice versa? Um, here we can look at this data and see, or we can place uh, labels on it to get some, some actual um, numerical values off of this. So let me get a good rotation of the CAD file and the scan data combined together. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm just gonna go use my pencil tool here to plot a few tags on here, okay? So you can see that when I click on the, uh, the, uh, the, the color map here, I get the negative values, the positive values, and they also, uh, the labels are associated with that color gradient scale. So from here, you can then present this on a PDF file as a report file. Uh, you can retain all this data that you've collected. Um, you can save it as a, um, a project file within 
Holly works. So you have data retention, of course, that's very important. Um, but yeah, that's that's my overview of Polyworks and, and how to go about scanning, how to set it up, uh, and how to collect the data. Um, so within you know 10 minutes here, I've done all the data collection, I've connected, and um, I've done my analysis, or even exported that ex, uh, uh, scan data out as a reverse engineering, an STL file or a point cloud. Okay. Well, well thank you very much, Jonah. That was very nice. Uh, appreciate you walking us through Cordis. Uh, just to kind of recap from today, we, we talked about uh, getting portable with the Wenzel MMA uh, and demonstrated how it's used utilizing Metric Polyworks. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we'd leave some time for Q&A toward the end of the presentation. So uh, at this time, I would like to kind of open that up for discussion. Uh, it looks like we've had a handful of questions submitted. So uh, let's take a peek at those uh, from the audience here. Uh, Jonah. Uh, what types of data can you export from Polyworks? Uh, okay, so I briefly touched on that earlier. Let me get out of here. Let me go back into Polyworks. So the the scan data that I've collected um, can is can be just point cloud data. Um, you know, if I go here and I select the export functionality here, well, there's all the export tools in here, and um, you know, Polyworks can be used. Uh, Again, it's a universal platform. So yeah, I can I can export all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, but the typical ones that you see are exporting as the first three, the first, first set of three as the point cloud, uh, just a simple ASCII or text file here. If I select, uh, let me select here an, an object to do and export. And there's your point cloud data here. Okay, So it's just a simple text file. Um, uh, that can be read in by other systems, uh, other CAD engines, et cetera. Or again, the other one is a very um, is the STL, which takes all the point clouds and creates a triangle, uh, a triangulation pattern across all points. So there's your polygonal model STL file, and again, those can be exported out of here and brought into another system or brought into the Polyworks in, in, uh, Polyworks modeler. Okay, thank you, Jonah. Uh, question two from the audience. How quickly can you switch between scanning and tactile? Um, well, there is a simple switch down here in the lower left-hand corner um, where I can select here the probe. And when I select the probe here, um, it allows me to select here either single, a single point uh, data. Um, I use the probe, I use the trigger, put the probe on the object, pull the trigger to return back a point or I can set up a continuous um, tactile scan with it. So not just using a laser, but using the probe as a tactile scan. And there you'll see the continuous time and continuous distance. So you gotta be kind of good with this because the probe can't leave the object. So you gotta kind of use your muscles a little bit, put some pressure on the part and drag it across. Of course, your part can't move. Bad data comes when you have bad. So when it's uh, laser scanning, uh, as long as you don't bump the part or touch the part, you really don't need much fixturing. <laughs> so that's the beauty thing. So it's just a simple switch in the interface. That's it. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Jonah. Uh, another question here. What are the options for mounting the arm? Uh, yeah, so I briefly mentioned this before. There, um, It comes with a, uh, a base already with a three and a half inch ring. That's the standard size for, for arms. Um, and the base is, is, a, is an aluminum uh, plate um, with some holes in it, you can bolt to a, a surface plate, a, a, some kind of flat table if you desire. There's also a magnetic base you can get, um, very strong magnetic base for mounting on a, on a, on a steel platform. Uh, there's also a tripod. Um, so you can have a tripod set up that's adjustable in height. Um, and there's also rolling carts, uh, which is great for transportabling um, within one facility. Uh, tripods are great if you're moving from plant to plant, if you will. Okay. Thank you, Jonah, and thank you everyone for the questions. Um, we are creeping up on our time limit here, so uh, I just want to say thanks again to everyone for spending your time with us this morning. Uh, it means a lot to Jonah and I. Uh, we do have a list of questions we have not been able to get to, uh, but we have your contact info, and we will follow up with you on those in the next couple of days. Uh, the slide that you're looking at now contains some contact info from Jonah and I, uh, and also a link where you can find more info about what we've shown today. Uh, I'll leave this slide up for the next uh, couple minutes here before we conclude, should anyone want to reach out between now and our follow-up, uh, but uh, that'll do it for us today. Thank you very much for joining us for uh, more Parts Faster with the Wenzel MMA. Uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.